Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tibet for Sunday, August 28th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we have a lot going on in the Atlantic today. We, of course, have Hurricane Gaston, an absolutely beautiful storm, but out in the middle of nowhere, not a threat to any land areas. And we have a tropical low entangled with an upper-level low still sitting in the northwest Gulf of Mexico. This is not a threat to develop tropically, but it is bringing very heavy rains to coastal areas of eastern Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Uh, but the big news today is the designation of two brand new tropical depressions, Tropical Depression 8 west of Bermuda and Tropical Depression 9 south of the Florida Keys. And we'll get to both of these, but let's start with T8 up here. This was former Invest 91L, came up south of Bermuda and is now moving toward the west-northwest. And uh, you can see the center of circulation very clearly here in the low-level clouds. Uh, but the reason you can see it so well, of course, is because it is being very heavily sheared out of the southeast. All of these thunderstorms are getting pushed off to the northwest side of the circulation, and this will likely be the story of this depression's life over the next couple of days. It will likely be chasing its own thunderstorms, sort of like a dog chasing its own tail, all the way up toward uh, Cape Hatteras here. It's going to get pretty close to North Carolina. Uh, if we look at the 500 millibar on the GFS uh, at a knit here, we see a big ridge to the north of the system, which is what is bringing it toward the west-northwest uh, very quickly right now. But as we go out in time out to a full day, this would be Monday afternoon, you'll see this trough come down into Maine here. And this starts breaking down the ridge south of the mid-Atlantic state. So you start getting this ridge to split into two pieces, one over Bermuda, one over the central United States. And so you start to get this break in between those two parts. And you can see a TD-8 here getting pretty close to the North Carolina coastline. But at this point, its westward progress will likely get halted and it will eventually turn up toward the northeast through this break between the two ridges to its right and left here. And so it'll likely turn away with time, but it could get pretty close to the North Carolina coastline. Exactly how close, always hard to kind of tell exactly when these things are going to turn. But it's probably going to be close enough to the coastline that since the shearing direction is out of the southeast, this is going to be the wet and windy side of the storm anyway. So by the time this gets close to the coast, even if it's still a few miles offshore, uh, most of the weather is going to be on this side of the track anyway if that shear continues as it has. And so this is likely to bring some adverse weather to the outer banks of North Carolina, and we'll have to be uh, watching for that. Tropical storm watches may be needed for this area soon. This is the current official forecast track. Again, showing that west-northwest path until it gets to an area just off of Cape Hatteras, and then it turns off toward the northeast in that break in the ridge, and uh, models will defer a little bit on how close exactly this gets to the coast. But again, a lot of weather will likely be on the left side of the track for the next couple of days, and so impacts are likely to affect coastal North Carolina by some time on Tuesday. And again, watches may be needed soon for that region. We also have newly formed Tropical Depression 9 south of the Florida Keys here. This is former Invest 99L that we've been uh, talking about for nearly a week now. This has finally acquired a well-defined enough surface circulation that you can see spinning in here and some thunderstorm activity with it that the National Hurricane Center has designated this a tropical depression as of this afternoon. Uh, but this continues to deal with several issues uh, now, mainly this wind shear that continues to come out of the north. You can see these clouds racing down parallel to the Florida Peninsula, pushing most of this thunderstorm activity off to the southeast of where the surface low is. And this continues to be something that TD9 will struggle with. And this is mostly due to this upper level low off South Carolina that we can see on water vapor imagery here. This is actually shearing TD8 out of the southeast and TD9 out of the northwest simultaneously due to the flow around it. Uh, but uh, TD9 will be dealing with this for probably another day or so. Uh, you can see though that the winds, the clouds out in the central gulf here are not moving very much, indicating light winds aloft. And if TD9 can actually get out into this area, that's when conditions may become a little more conducive for some intensification. But it has to deal with the shear first for the next couple of days. And it's also still having internal struggles. If we can see the surface circulation is pretty well defined today. This is the surface low, and this is very nice now. But if you look for the mid-level low, you're actually going to find it way back here, southwest of Andros Island. This is the mid-level low. These are clearly not in the same location. We've talked about how over the last many days that this has been true. This decoupled system, if it's not stacked with the mid-level low on top of the surface low, it's very hard for these systems to intensify in any significant way. And so what's going to happen is since these are so separated as it is, this one's really going to just have to get left behind. And all of this convection near Cuba is going to have to become sufficiently intense that it can redevelop a brand new 
mid-level center on top of the surface center that's already here and that again always takes time and it really needs the shear to lighten up to lighten up excuse me uh, in order to let that happen so TD9 is still struggling a bit here and it's not going to take off and intensify really quickly at the moment uh, but it is very slowly becoming a little better defined over time which is obviously why it's become a tropical depression today so things are getting a little bit better at least at the surface level now we can see that since we do have the shear out of this direction most of the convection is uh, off to the southeast of the center and it coincidentally is near the coast of Cuba now a system in this uh, location when this is happening when the shear is pushing the convection to the south side you also have Cuba which is acting like a frictional barrier on the inflow and really helping to focus convergence over the adjacent water on the south side of the circulation. This really helps to tighten the south side of the low center, and these west-southwest winds on the south side are pretty strong. And uh, what this does is it really keeps dragging the surface low uh, a little bit farther south over time. It really wants to just parallel the coast of Cuba here toward the west-southwest. And the global models usually get this wrong. They keep trying to take the system up through the keys like this. We had many runs that did that over the last several days. We can see that the actual path is going to be more like this and a little bit farther out into the Gulf now because this convection and the topographic effects of Cuba are pulling it consistently farther and farther south with time. This is something that the global models do not resolve very well. So this will likely continue to maybe even lose a, bit, a little bit of latitude before finally moving more toward the northwest and then turning out toward the north and northeast. And we'll talk about the long-term track in a second here. Uh, but in the short term, uh, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, some showers, of course, moving into South Florida, not much different from regular afternoon convection, but some heavy downpours locally will be possible on the northeast side of this as this remains in the vicinity. We'll probably get more rain later in the week, and we'll again talk about that as this makes another turn toward Florida later. So uh, we may not be done with the rain in some parts of Florida from this particular system. So here's the GFS 500 millibar forecast out to Tuesday afternoon here, and this is going to be the storm down in the central gulf starting to come up more toward the north and you can see this big ridge over the southern u.s and then you can see the other uh, ridge out in the atlantic here and there's a little bit of a break in between this is the same break we talked about with td8 and uh, this is providing a little bit of a corridor of a, a weak steering flow uh, that allows us to kind of start moving more toward the north and northeast here but what really brings us up to the northeast is a big trough that you'll see come down by thursday morning you can totally see the pattern change here a trough that's kind of up off your screen comes down into the screen and really takes over the eastern seaboard so this completely breaks down the ridge and uh, introduces a very strong steering flow out of the southwest and the mid levels and so this will clearly uh, bring this up toward the northeast and right now on most of the global models up into the big bend area of florida and then somewhere out into this region uh, either inland or over water in the southwest atlantic uh, whether or not it's inland at this point pretty hard to say because it's far out uh, but in general this trough comes down brings this up to the northeast and that's the general track forecast at the moment uh, it's pretty hard to escape this trough the only question is exactly where and when the turn occurs and the nature of this trough because uh, the models have been uh, changing their forecast of this trough over time is becoming more amplified over the last uh, several runs and so there's still some details yet to be ironed out as to exactly how this trough will interact with the storm in the northeast gulf. In addition uh, this causes a bunch of problems for the intensity forecast as well because although we talked about this area of uh, lighter winds out here in the water vapor imagery in the central gulf this could allow an air, a time when conditions are favorable for some intensification of the storm but as the storm begins to move north it may have to deal with wind shear both from this upper low to the west and from that new trough that comes down because once you get a trough into the southeast u.s like this you start to get this really strong west southwest uh, jet over the northern gulf and the southern states and so this could impart some westerly shear on the storm once it gets into the northeastern gulf uh, but the extent to which that uh, the extent to which it hurts the storm will depend on how strong the storm is uh, the stronger it is the easier it will be able to fight off shear you can see how uh, a weak storm such as this is really struggling with the shear if it was stronger to begin with say a hurricane it would not be struggling quite as much in this area so the stronger they are the better they are to fight off shear uh, the better able they are to fight off shear excuse me uh, but as we go out in time once we have this trough come down not only do we have shear we have dry air coming down on the back side so that's another negative uh, for strengthening uh, but one positive is potentially the uh, big jet streak that's going to tend to form over uh, the southeast United States here and we can see at the 250 millibar level here's the big trough and on the forward flank you get this uh, 
accelerating wind flow out ahead of uh, the storm which would be here near North Florida and sometimes sometimes the dry air and shear if they're not too bad the storm can take advantage of this jet stream with divergence aloft and it can actually increase convection and cause uh, intensification of the storm as it moves toward the trough before shear picks up too much. Uh, so this is actually a fairly complicated interaction coming up with this big deep trough and exactly how the models forecast that is likely to change over the next few days and so there are some details uh, that will likely uh, not be ironed out for a couple of days yet. As it stands is the current official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing the west westward track in general continuing and then you see that turn toward the north and northeast in the Gulf that we talked about and so by Thursday sometime this ends up near the Big Bend area of Florida and then it crosses over perhaps into the southwest Atlantic off of the Carolinas but you can see how big uh, the cone of average error is here this is the average uh, position error 70% of all storm locations fall within this circle at day 5 uh, due to the current forecast error. So there's a lot of uncertainty as to where exactly the storm could be by later this week and also the strength. Right now the National Hurricane Center only has a tropical storm with weak to moderate winds which are you know not actually that weak 45 to 50 miles per hour here and of course lots of heavy rain will be a problem over the Florida Peninsula regardless of the strength of the system uh, but this could uh, even have a chance to be a little stronger than this depending on how well it is able to organize and take advantage of some better conditions for a little bit over the central Gulf so this is a uh, kind of still an uncertain forecast in the long range in many ways so we'll have to keep an eye on this right now the only things that are certain are continued wet weather and impacts uh, from heavy rain and the potential for flooding later on in the week from TD9 as it continues to bring most of the heavy rains up on its eastern side, uh, especially if it's weak. Uh, the western side may be a little bit drier if this is a weak system such as the NHC currently forecasts. Mostly to the right of track would be really wet here if it takes a track like this. So a flooding, always a problem in Florida with a storm like this in the eastern gulf turning toward the northeast. So we'll have to keep an eye on that regardless of how strong the winds are with this system over time. So we have several days yet to watch this and again we have TD8 as well moving toward North Carolina while all of this is going on in the Gulf. So we've got two things, uh, two storms uh, threatening the US coastline right now. Gaston not a threat to land and uh, we'll continue watching the tropics and I'll keep you up to date here. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the latest information. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.